I would like to give you a 100,000 uh, feet view of researching cryptography over the last 20, 25 years. So looking back at the last 25 years, I was trying to find the major themes, major uh, changes. And I would say that uh, the two uh, major changes were that cryptography went from secret to public and from art to science. And I think that these two movements were intertwined in uh, a very strong way. It was almost necessary for one uh, to happen in order to uh, make the other possible. Because what happened 25 years ago when, RS, when we thought about RSA was that none of us knew much about cryptography. We uh, thought that we uh, discovered a cute uh, little creature. Uh, it was very interesting to look at. It looked uh, as if we could do lots of things with it. And only later we realized that uh, this was a genie that got out of a government bottle. And uh, it's very difficult to study genies while they're in the bottle. That's one of the lessons you should uh, remember. And uh, for the next uh, 20 years, uh, while we were trying to uh, look at it from various directions and dissect it and study it and apply it, other hands were trying to push it back into the bottle. And uh, there were interesting fights. And while I do not want to get into politics, I couldn't resist finding, uh, uh, telling you two quotes which I recently found. So the decisive moment in which cryptography uh, was finally released. The government gave up and uh, decided that uh, all, uh, essentially all export controls could be loosened was uh, in uh, 1999. Uh, and the last uh, couple of years before that, there were major battles. And uh, for example, in March 3rd, 1998, Louis Free, the uh, head of the FBI, the director of the FBI, uh, gave the following testimony before the uh, Senate Appropriations Committee. Uh, law enforcement remains in unanimous agreement that the widespread use of robust, non-recoverable encryption will devastate our ability to fight crime and terrorism. Now, cryptography was liberalized in 1999. This was four years ago. And I looked at the latest report published by the US government about what happened with this uh, doom and gloom prediction. So four years after it was liberalized, here is what the US government itself is saying about the effect of encryption on its law enforcement. Uh, in, in 2002, that's the latest year for which figures are available, no federal wiretap reports indicated that encryption was encountered. States and local jurisdictions reported that encryption was encountered in 16 wiretaps out of approximately uh, 1,300. Uh, however, in none of these cases was encryption reported to have prevented law enforcement officials from obtaining the plain text of communication intercepted. So talking about the Senate investigating some inflated claims of threats to national security, I think someone ought to look at these two uh, quotes. Anyway, cryptography was a major concern to governments, and there was a good reason for that. I'm not trying to belittle it. But I think that once the genie came out of the bottle, and it came out uh, by necessity, because there was a need for cryptography, because too many people were thinking about it, because if we had, had not done it, somebody else would have. There are lots of reasons why cryptography started in the 70s, and why the government's attempts to uh, push the genie back into the bottle were hilarious, were sad. Look at it any way you want, but they were doomed to failure. Okay. Could this change from secret to public made it possible to change cryptography from an art form into science. And cryptography today is a thriving area of scientific research. Uh, there are major courses given at almost uh, any university. There are, uh, there's a very large number of students who are taking these courses. Uh, I counted how many co major conferences are going to be held in the next six months. And there are about 40 major conferences. The uh, biggest conferences, Crypto and Eurocrypt, are attracting between 500 and 600 participants. And just to put it uh, in perspective, the uh, uh, number of mathematicians employed by the NSA, and this is uh, taken from open source, uh, so this number is about 600 mathematicians. 
So the number of participants in one of the, uh, our conferences is about the same as the total number of mathematicians employed by the NSA. And uh, if you look at some of the trade shows which mix research community with uh, implementers, with uh, industry, they attract more than 10,000 participants. That's the RSA conference. So cryptography is now a thriving area, and of course the ultimate seal of approval is the fact that we are all standing here and giving this talk. Cryptography is very central. Uh, if you look at how it interacts with, it, with its environment, of course it uh, benefits a lot from um, uh, developments in mathematics and statistics. Uh, uh, communication and information theory uh, is extremely important, and in fact Shannon, in his famous paper in 1949, showed the relationship between information theory and cryptography. Uh, cryptography, cryptographic research, cryptographic applications are big consumers of computer power, and on the other hand, cryptography, and in particular cryptanalysis, was also the reason that many of our computer systems today exist. Many of those were ordered secretly by uh, the various national organizations. And of course, there are many policy issues which are involved in uh, cryptography. So cryptography is just at the intersection of all those areas. One of the things that make cryptography almost unique is that there is a very strong relationship between theory and practice. Ideas move back and forth between them, and therefore, if uh, I try to look at the various sub areas of cryptography, they can be characterized into practical theory and theoretical practice. So when I talk about practical theory, I'm referring to uh, a, uh, taking a various abstract ideas from mathematics. You take the geometry of numbers, and uh, you use them in order to break actual crypto systems. Or you use the number field scene, and you use it in order to factorize large numbers. Uh, you are using various theoretical techniques from logic in order to prove the security of real protocols. So there is a lot of, uh, there are many research papers which uh, take theoretical ideas and immediately show how applicable they are. And there's also the movement in the other direction. You take a variety of practical things. There is a crypto system. Crypto systems have existed for thousands of years. Now you're trying to define what does it mean for a crypto system to be secure. You're trying to extract notions of security, definitions of security, definitions of attacks, and suddenly we have the tool how to do it with complexity theory, and we can take the practice and theorize it. Cryptography is also a lot of fun. All three of us had great fun talking together, and uh, if you look at the uh, titles of cryptographic papers, they're usually very uh, whimsical and they have lots of... Uh, funny names. Uh, cryptography gets a lot of media attention. Uh, almost every day you can read in the newspapers about a particular uh, protocol being broken or a scheme attacked or viruses spread, etc. And uh, I also must say that cryptography is a wonderful educational tool. If I am invited to give a talk about mathematics at high school, uh, usually uh, five kids show any interest. If I'm invited to talk about cryptography, the room is full. So cryptography is a great way to introduce high school kids, students, to uh, quite advanced topics in mathematics without them noticing it. <laughs> OK. Cryptographic uh, misconceptions, I think I'm running a bit out of time, so I'll skip it. It's uh, misunderstood both by uh, policymakers, by researchers, by implementers. And I'll try to summarize what you should look for in the following three laws of security. First of all, absolutely secure systems do not exist. If you try to build a, an actual implementation, an actual scheme, which is going to withstand all possible attacks by all would-be hackers, you are doomed to failure. There are notions of sufficient, sufficient security. So I can give you many examples where the security level seems to be ridiculously low, and yet it works in practice. Postage stamps, for example. Uh, that's a ridiculous security measure, and still uh, people are paying uh, many, many uh, millions or billions of dollars uh, every year in order to buy them. The distribution of newspapers, you know, with this uh, little vending machine, it works. It's not highly secure, but it's good enough. 
if you, in many cases, if you try to over-design, what happens is that you'll run into the second difficulty. The second law says that in order to have your vulnerability, you have to double your expenditure. And initially, this works very well. The economics is in your favor. You just spend a little bit, and you will have a big jump in extra security. But later on, when you try to get rid of the last bug and try to protect yourself against some of the crazier attacks that one might apply to you, it becomes less and less cost-effective, and at some point, fairly early on, it's better to quit this game. Cryptography, by the way, encryption algorithms are not the weak points in most security systems. Cryptography is usually bypassed. I'm not aware of any major world-class uh, uh, security system employing cryptography in which the hackers penetrated the system by uh, actually uh, going through the cryptanalysis and uh, doing very deep mathematics. Usually there are much easier ways how to penetrate the security of systems. So build sufficiently secure crypto system, but don't overdo it. That's the lesson. Now I'll end my talk with uh, a summary of uh, what, where do we stand today in a variety of sub-areas. I'm going to describe to you in black the major achievements so far. I'm going to describe in red the strong and weak points and the major challenges. And I'm going to give a 1 to 10 grade where do we stand today, in my opinion. And of course, all those of you who want to do cryptography in a passive way, want to read about it, you should look for the areas which get high grade. All those of you who want to, do, to be active in cryptography, to do actual research, look for the areas with low grades. That's where the open problems are. Let's start with the theory of cryptography. So, as I said before, we have very well-defined notions and primitives. We understand what does it mean for a crypto system to be secure, what are the various assumptions, what are one-way functions, what are trapdoor permutations, and so on and so on. We have well understood relationship between them. We understand what are the minimal requirements in order to build a crypto system, a public key crypto system, a signature scheme, a commitment scheme, whatever. There are many deep connections with the theory of pseudo-randomness and with complexity theory, and there are beautiful mathematical results. So I would say that we have achieved a lot in the area of uh, theory of cryptography. Uh, the main challenge, I would say, is to reduce the dependence on, on unproven assumptions. Almost everything we do is to say that if problem A is difficult, then problem B is also difficult. I would love to be able to make uh, a statement without if-then, but we need help from complexity theory for that. So final grade here is nine. If I look at uh, public key encryption and signature schemes, we have several excellent schemes which had withstood the test of time. We have the RSA, we have the Diffie-Hellman, we have the digital signature algorithm developed by NIST for uh, doing signatures. Uh, it is based on several sub-areas of mathematics, modular arithmetic, elliptic curves. I would say that in this area, there is a very vigorous script analytic research. Many people have many new ideas about how to factorize larger and larger numbers probably not with a, with a completely polynomial time algorithm, but I won't be surprised if there will be uh, improvements in the uh, foreseeable future. We have uh, excellent theory. We have expanding applications. The big challenges are prove that we don't deserve the Turing Award or make, find a new basis for public key crypto system. These are the two major uh, challenges. I would give it a final grade of eight. Secret key cryptography is divided into two sub-areas which are fairly distinct. One deals with block ciphers. So you are taking n bits of data, mix them internally together with a key, and come up with n bits of encrypted data, ciphertext. And in this uh, sub-area, we have some algorithms. DES is now almost 30 years old and it is uh, still not broken except in practice, except by exhaustive search. Of course, in those old days, governments insisted on keys being too short, 56 bits, but the actual design of the DES is quite a good design. 
Now we have an, a much better design, the advanced encryption standard, which had been adopted a couple of years ago uh, by the US government, and it's likely to be adopted by uh, worldwide. And uh, uh, there are modes of operation. Uh, in terms of cryptanalytic approaches, we have two solid techniques that we can use both in order to break crypto systems, but since they are so well known, now they are used mostly in order to evaluate the security of new proposals. So whenever somebody invents a new secret key block cipher, we know how to try to evaluate its security. We try to apply differential cryptanalysis. We try to apply linear cryptanalysis. And we always specify that those two attacks require such and such complexity uh, to apply. And this is sufficiently high, so the crypto system is strong. Trying to summarize where we are. We have good cryptanalytic tools, but they could be better. We have reasonable choice of primitives. We have, uh, we understand how S-boxes and linear mappings and uh, co error correcting codes and all kinds of uh, primitives like this can interact with each other to build up good crypto systems. There are many good schemes. And uh, the big challenges are that we have good theory and we have good schemes, but they are totally disconnected from each other. So we don't know how to prove the security under reasonable assumptions of any of those concrete crypto systems. We believe they are excellent, but we don't know how to apply the theoretical tools to the practical schemes. So we have two solid legs with nothing in between. Final grade, seven. Stream ciphers. In stream ciphers, you don't take the data and mix it up. Instead, you take the data and exclusive or it with a pseudo-random bit stream, which is generated by another algorithm, which is totally unrelated to the data that you are actually trying to encrypt. So in this case, we have only a small number of publicly available ideas. There are linear feedback shift registers, which are used in most of those designs. We have a few cryptanalytic attacks, fast correlation attacks, and some new algebraic attacks from the last couple of years. I would say that this is the one area where I believe that the secret services know much more than the outside community about how to make good codes and how to break good codes. So we have weak theory and weak practice. Both our legs are fairly weak. And if you are looking for a good research area, I think that that's one where you should uh, look at. Uh, so I would give it a final grade of four. Now, two more areas. There is the issue of theoretical cryptographic protocols uh, here we have achieved basically everything we wanted. We have developed the theory of zero-knowledge interactive proofs, which enable me to prove any statement to you in a way that you'll be totally convinced of its correctness, and yet you'll know nothing beyond the correctness of the statement. So I can claim that I proved uh, the Riemann hypothesis, and I can convince the mathematicians that I have actually done it, and yet I'll not reveal one bit of information about how the proof actually goes. And uh, it turns out to be extremely useful building block in building theoretical protocols. We have secure multi-party computations. Uh, all of you here could uh, engage in a public discussion about your wealth. And at the end of this public discussion, the richest person in this room uh, will uh, know this fact. But you will, none of you will know how rich all the others are. So you're trying to achieve some common goal by this open discussion by limiting the flow of information from one party to another. So basically, with such tools, almost anything is now doable and provable. And there are many gems, many beautiful protocols. Unfortunately, the theoretical protocols we have are way too slow. So to make this strong theory practical, we need some new ideas. Final grade eight. And finally, in the area of practical cryptographic protocols, those that can be applied in practice, those which are used by uh, all the software companies of the world, uh, by hardware manufacturers, etc. There are many ad hoc ideas. There are some proofs of security in a specialized model, which is called the random oracle model. I don't have time to define it, but if you make the assumption that uh, there exists some oracle that is going to give uh, truly random uh, bits to everyone who asks for it, uh, then you can prove the security of some of them. And uh, we have a rapidly expanding body of results. On the other hand, we also have lots of buggy protocols. Uh, and the challenges are to incorporate side channel attacks, those where you bypass the cryptography rather than attacking it, and the random oracle model, understanding it better. 
I just want to summarize, it was a very thrilling 25 year journey, at least for me. The best is yet to come. I am sure that cryptography will continue to thrive. Thanks to everyone and in particular to my colleagues.